Hello, welcome to Maltbox. I'm Andy and this is whisky review number one in the newly reformed Maltbox whisky blog. Thank you for tuning in first of all. Very much appreciate you coming along and having a look at this whisky review. Um, without further ado, I'm not going to mess about. Um, I've got a fantastic little whisky for you here today. Um, what I'm going to be reviewing is a Speyside whisky from a very underrated and very small distillery. Now, it's a distillery that has probably one of the smallest capacities in terms of how much alcohol it can produce in the entirety of Scotland. And that distillery is Ben Romach. And this is the Ben Romach five year old. Released in January roundabouts of 2015. It's been out for around eight or nine months now. So it's not brand new, but it's out there, it's affordable, and it's a very, very well made malt whisky. So, I mean, before I actually move on to the whisky, I suppose I should probably tell you a little about myself. As I introduced myself at the start, I'm Andy. Um, I originally set up this blog in around 2011, 2012, but I had to put it to the side when I set up the Manchester Whisky Club. Um, and I've been running that for the last three years and running whisky tastings. So I've actually set, sort of stepped aside from my responsibilities with the club and I've now got a bit of time to spare to get back to reviewing whiskies and make my way through the shelves, basically, which are right over there. Um, so, back to the whisky. Ben Romach, as I said earlier, has a very limited capacity, which basically means that they cannot produce vast amounts of, uh, of alcohol. Um, vast amounts of sort of uh, malt spirit. So, just to give you an idea, Ben Romac's official capacity, if they operate at 100%, is around 500,000 litres of alcohol a year. So, that's not 500,000 litres of 40%, that's 500,000 litres of spirit straight from the still. Just to put it in sort of a little bit of context, Glen Livet, so probably if, well again, yeah, it is the world's most popular malt whisky, has a capacity of around 12, 12 and a half million. So that's a, a big difference. Um, ben Romach, Speyside Distillery, same as Glenlivet, just smaller scale, very, very small scale. Uh, at the moment, they're operating at around half of the potential capacity. Um, as of last year, they were operating around 245,000 litres a year, and that actually doubled from the previous year because demand has actually gone up, which is a very, very positive thing. The distillery isn't owned by one of the giants like Diageo. It's actually owned by an independent bottler that you've probably heard of, Gordon McPhail, and they've owned the distillery since 1993. And they've basically completely turned the distillery around. They've really, really increased the popularity of it. Uh, the five-year-old is exactly that, it's five years old and do you know what, the fact that they say it is absolutely fantastic. They've not gone out there and thought, do you know what, we'll do what everybody else is doing and we've got some young spirit, we're going to put a really fancy name on it and sell it for the same price as the age statement stuff. I'll tell you what, we'll call it Stargazer or Street Sweeper, something like that, you know, you know what I mean. And it's just really refreshing to actually see an official distillery bottling actually just have such a young number on it. Now, young whiskey isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the fact that they've been so honest about it is a very, very positive step forward. And I think a lot of other distilleries and bottlers can actually take a bit of a bit of a follow-on really from from what these guys are doing. Um, the actual whiskey itself is bottled at forty percent and it was matured, 80% of the spirit in this was matured in ex-bourbon barrels and 20% in sherry casks. So 80% bourbon, 20% sherry makeup. Uh, well, without further ado, I'll, I'll get, get going. So, I've actually come across Ben Romach quite a lot more recently, in the last two or three years, and in part, that is due to the, the rebranding, which, I mean, as you see, it's, it's very fetching. It's very modern, very uh, very minimal. It's, it's nice. It's a really nice packaging. On to the whiskey. As you can see, the colour is it's going to be pretty light. 
due to the age and also the cast makeup that goes into it. Um, I'd say what's that? It's, it's a white wine, isn't it? Let's let's go a bit overboard. We'll call it Sauvignon Blanc colour, just to be just to be a bit cliche. Now on the nose. Very fresh, very, very, very vibrant. Couldn't get my words out then. There's some wet pebbles there, a bit of salt. So when you're on the beach and uh, you know you're at the, the, the front of where the sea's coming and you smell when the the sea sort of goes back, that sort of like salty, ozone-y. It's it's very grassy, like a lowland whiskey as well. Think Bladnock, think Lenkinchy. Yeah, there is a lot of lemon on there. It's also quite creamy. A um, bit of pepper as well. Sort of vanilla custard. Sherbet lemons. Sherbet lemons. Definitely. Now, firstly, you might notice that the camera angle might have changed slightly. If not, fantastic. Let's skip over that part. Um, onto the palette now. It's a very honest whiskey. It's it's not trying to be something that it isn't. It's just a very good, honest, open whiskey. Again, very very similar to Lowland notes again. Sort of again grassy. Um, you've got more vanilla there. You've got apple peel and slices of apple. You've also got. And as daft as it sounds, you've got a bit of lime in there as well, key lime pie, so there's still a bit of creaminess in there as well. Coconut is coming through now. I'd better go back on them. Mm. The longer it goes on, bounty bars, so coconut and chocolate in there, particularly dark chocolate. And all the way through, there's this lovely soft smoke, and um, it's it's not overpowering. What it's actually doing is binding everything together and just making it work really, really well. It's very harmonious for such a young age. And um, the reason that I mention smoke, and a lot of people are quite surprised when you do talk about smoky space ciders. In Ben Romack's case, there's a reason behind it, um, purely intentional. Gordon McPhail have actually tried to recreate an older Speyside profile. Now, the reason for that being that back in the day, when there wasn't huge malting houses to malt your barley for you, um, and it wasn't done with more modern methods, they would burn peat in order to dry out malted barley. So, it's exactly the same as the concept of Isla whiskies. So your Isla whiskies, your Lafroig, Gerard Beggs use peated uh, malt barley and that is exactly what they've done here. They've used only a touch, not too much, they've used a little bit of uh, peated malt in the mash for this particular, uh, well not, not just this particular whiskey, no, for, for the majority of the Ben Romac range to be honest with you. Um, and it works fantastically, it's absolutely, it's really really good. Got to say, it's fantastic. The finish is still there. I can still taste it, particularly at the top of my throat, back of my uh, back of my mouth. It's warming. It's long. It is still very creamy. Basically, overall, it's a fantastic whiskey. It's very very affordable. It's fine. You can find it. It's very accessible on uh, places like Master Malt Whiskey Exchange. Um, it's also available in some independent retailers as well, like there's one particular one in Manchester called Aston's of Manchester that have a good selection of the Gordon Fail and Ben Romack range. And then, um, I suppose now onto the important part, the score. I've never been a big fan of scoring whiskies, but I thought, well, you know, when in Rome. Considering the age, the quality of the whisky, the presentation, the price, I think it's fair to say that I'm, I'm quite happy to give this whiskey 85 out of 100. Now, 
some of you might think, oh, well, that's a bit low compared to other whiskey reviews that I've, uh, I've seen. Not necessarily in terms of this whiskey, but the way that they, they rate things. I'm quite stingy. But I was really, really very impressed with, it, with this. So that kind of brings us to, uh, to the end of, uh, end of our review. Now, before I go, just to let you know, there's going to be a review up every Thursday and or Monday. So we're going to be doing weekly vlogs here on YouTube and or the blog. So if you're watching from the blog, thank you very much. The next review, we're doing a series of Ben Romax. We're sticking with them. The next review is going to be side by side, actually, of the Ben Romax 10. You saw my beer there, didn't you? Ben Romax 10 100 proof. So we're going to do side by side of those. And then in the third review, after that, we're going to review this little beast, which is the 30 year old 3-0. So I'm very much looking forward to it. So, once again, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. We're on Twitter, so if you'd like to, uh, to drop me a tweet or start following us, the Twitter handle is at Maltbox, all one word. If you'd like to drop us an email with any suggestions, feedback, or if you'd like us to review something, then send an email to maltbox at gmail.com and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much. Cheers for tuning in.